over 50 Ukrainian generals and officers killed in missile strike. Close to $100 billion worth of deals signed at major Russian economic forum. EU's new plan won't save Eurozone from collapsing. According to Reuters, trust in media worldwide at all-time low as people avoid news. Warships have destroyed a command center with caliber cruise missiles, killing dozens of Ukrainian officers, the Russian Defense Ministry said on Sunday. More than 50 generals and officers of the Ukrainian armed forces were killed, the statement said. The strike took place near the village of Shirakaya Dacha in the Propetrovsk region. The strike hit the compound in which commanders of several Ukrainian units were gathering for a meeting, Moscow said. The ministry added that caliber missiles were also used to destroy 10 M777 howitzers and up to 20 armored vehicles that were recently delivered from the west, and had been stored inside a factory building in the southern city of Nikolaev. In parallel, the general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces reported on Sunday that the country's artillery destroyed several Russian multiple rocket launches. Meanwhile in St. Petersburg, representatives from over 130 countries, including unfriendly states, attended the annual SPIEF 2022 forum. The 25th International Economic Forum, held in St. Petersburg from June 15 to 18 in Russia, resulted in 5.6 trillion rubles, $97 billion, worth of agreements, which is 30% more than last year. Over 690 deals were signed during the four-day event. Despite the tense political situation regarding Russia's military operation in Ukraine, officials and businessmen from more than 130 countries took part in the forum this year, including representatives from all unfriendly states that have imposed sanctions on Russia. The forum's business program included 214 events and focused on Russian and global economic and social issues and technology. The presidents of Egypt, China, and Kazakhstan took part in a plenary session of the forum along with Russian President Vladimir Putin. According to Anton Kobyakov, a Putin advisor and head of the SPIEF organizing committee, the forum showcased the economic sovereignty of Russia while highlighting the importance of the platform on the international level. In Europe, the European Central Bank has introduced a tool this week to help southern states with rising debt, but analysts have cast doubt it will succeed. The new bond reinvestment plan introduced by the European Central Bank, ECB, earlier this week to help indebted EU states is unlikely to work, Reuters and Bloomberg report, citing analysts. The ECB came up with the plan to help the EU's southern nations, the bloc's most indebted, with mounting obligations. The regulator said it would direct cash to more indebted nations from debt maturing in the 1.7 trillion euros, 1.8 trillion dollars, pandemic support scheme. This means that while prior to the announcement, the process of buying ECB bonds by states took place in accordance with each individual country's investment, preference would now be given to countries with high debt, such as Italy, with its gross debt amounting to around 150% of GDP. However, experts say the move is unlikely to solve the debt crises. Olli Rehn, Finland's central bank chief, told Reuters that the measure will merely help prevent unwarranted market moves and will not help countries in case of truly large debt issues. Markus Ferber, a German member of the European Parliament, noted that the ECB might be stretching its area of expertise too far. The ECB's job is to deliver on price stability, not to ensure favorable financing conditions. Some countries now simply get the bill for years of irresponsible fiscal policies, he told the news outlet. According to financial analyst Richard Cookson, while the main goal of a central bank is to keep inflation low, the European regulator seems to have a different target, keeping the weakest EU members from leaving the currency union. The ECB has now put itself in an impossible position. For the past 10 years, rather than targeting inflation, monetary policy has been set with a view to keeping its weakest members from leaving the currency union. Thus, it has ceased to be an inflation-targeting central bank, Cookson wrote in an article in Bloomberg. In other news, a growing number of people around the world are deliberately avoiding news media. Nearly two out of five people polled in an annual Reuters study reported sometimes or often avoiding consuming news, according to the survey, which was conducted by Reuters across 46 countries earlier this year and published on Tuesday. 38% of respondents said they were avoiding news coverage of certain topics, such as in this case the COVID-19 pandemic, because coverage had become repetitive and depressing, a surge of 10 percentage points from the figures reported in 2017. 
Of those who confessed to avoiding the news, 43% complained there was too much coverage of politics and the pandemic, while 36% blamed the news for their poor mood and 29% lamented there was simply too much news to process. News avoidance among British respondents has increased the most, with 46% claiming to avoid the news, sometimes, or, often, nearly twice as many as in 2016. The BBC suffered the worst drop among all public media brands covered in the report, losing 20 percentage points since 2018. Among the reasons cited by UK residents for distrusting their media was a concern that news organisations put their own commercial and political interests ahead of societies. This channel is dedicated to providing you with news, global events, and analysis, in an unbiased, easy-to-understand manner, excellent for getting quick updates and insights, and for educational purposes. If you get some value out of this video, please consider helping us. Give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when new content is released.